So <clears throat> I will talk about a new kind of economy that is already emerging around us. The European Commission is now spending over $3 million to help implement it. This is the next step, the next logical step, after open source hardware and open source software. Before we dive into this subject and see what this economy is all about, I would like to take a look at some trends. So we started by having free software, and then we saw the emergence of open source software with a whole business community forming around it. And classical example here, um, one classical example is Red Hat. Then we had open knowledge platforms like Wikipedia. We're now seeing the emergence of the open hardware movement with do-it-yourself communities, hackerspaces, and fab labs popping up like mushrooms everywhere. And these are online communities that design and produce open hardware. And we're entering a phase where there is a, a, a new business ecosystem that is created around open hardware. And there are a few good examples that I can cite here. Arduino, for example, or Adafruits, or SparkFun, or others. These are successful businesses designing and commercializing open hardware. We have access to very powerful online collaboration tools at marginal costs. We have crowdfunding, peer lending, and alternative currencies like Bitcoin. We also have extreme manufacturing, which is a distributed manufacturing process that was put in place by Wikispeed. And those of you who don't know what Wikispeed is, it's also an online community that designs and creates open source cars. And in perfecting this distributed manufacturing process, the um, extreme manufacturing, Wikispeed draw up a new digital fabrication techniques like 3D printing and others. So everything you see here and more converges towards what Yokai Benkler calls commons-based peer production. This is the synthesis of all these patterns that we see around us. I will illustrate how commons-based peer production works by telling you the story of Sensorica, an organization we're building that embodies all these fundamental principles of this new economy. And the story starts in 2009 when Ivan and I invented this new scientific instrument that is now used in biomedical research. It doesn't really matter what it is. It could have been something else. It's just a piece of hardware. And we were quite impressed with the level of innovation of these open hardware communities. So we decided to share our design and to invite other people to participate. And this level of openness and transparency allowed other creative individuals, other innovators, to find our project and to participate, to contribute to it. At this point in time, Sensorica as an organization looked pretty much like any other open hardware project. It was a basement project with a few individuals collaborating on a piece of hardware. Then we got a little luckier, so we got some funding and we had some money to spend on a space. We rented a lab and we bought some equipment, we bought some tools and we shared that among us. And that allowed us to build our first prototypes, to build our knowledge commons, and to build the know-how around our core technology. So by sharing this lab space and this equipment made Sensorica look more like a fab lab, more like a hacker space. And then something happened to this organization that pushed it forward. A few very clever business individuals saw an opportunity in our innovation. And we made a study to evaluate the market value of this product idea that we had. And we realized that together we had created a good potential to generate revenue. Now we're putting the notion of revenue in here, in the whole mix, and that represents a new kind of incentive which adds on top of what was there before. So from this point on, Sensorica started to attract more and more people with business skills, and we started to draft a very unusual business plan. Sensorica 
was now on the path to become an open enterprise, something that we call an open value network. Let's take a few moments here and look at the main features of this nascent organization. Transparency in terms of access to information helped the organization to grow and to get more access to resources. We inherited openness in terms of access to participation from other open projects. Now, nobody, nobody got paid for the work done. So nobody could be told or forced to do anything. There are no economic interdependencies between individuals. So basically, there are no mechanisms to support power relations, the type of relation that you have with your boss. So from the start, Sensorica needs a horizontal governance. Like with any other open source projects, all the participants contribute with their own assets, with their own resources, and they decide where and how to allocate these resources. So from day one, Sensorica is a decentralized organization um, when it comes to allocation and um, uh, utilization of resources. Now the lesson here is that once you choose the internet as a platform for value creation, you are naturally driven towards new relations of production. So transparency, openness, horizontal governance, decentralization, they're not just accidents. They are in some sense imposed by this new medium that we choose to create value. So we noticed that we had created this potential to generate revenue. And now everybody starts to worry, how do we distribute that? Who gets what? And we all agreed on a very basic principle, a principle of fairness, to distribute value in proportion to everyone's contribution. So we started to design and to implement what we call the value accounting system, which allows participants to log their contributions of various types, large or small, and then to evaluate these contributions in context. And then the system uses something that we call a value equation, which is an algorithm that computes equity. So it takes these contributions of various types and it computes everybody's piece of the pie. And it does that in real time, dynamically, as value is being added to the project. Now, the value equation, it's something that the community designs, customizes, it's in some sense, it embodies the rules of the game. It can even be customized for every project in particular. Talking about contributions, they can come on different, uh, different forms. For example, I can contribute with my time, spending the time on a task, on a project. I can spend some money to buy some equipment to pay the rent. I can use my social capital to expand the network or to open new markets to new products. I can also contribute with an idea with a design, with a prototype. I can expand the functionality of a product. Accounting for all these types of contributions, it's not an easy task, we know it. But we also feel that the value accounting system is a very important building block of this new economy. So from an open source project to a fab lab, Sensorica is now building internally a business function. And unlike other successful open hardware projects out there, like Arduino, for example, we resisted the temptation to encapsulate these business functions into a classical form like a corporation or a co-op. In fact, we resisted any type of organization that puts a barrier between those who produce and those who handle resources and make important decisions. So we eliminated this distinction between the hierarchical business core, like Arduino, for example, and the community that grows around it and helps it design the products. And we could eliminate this distinction because the value accounting system is able to take into consideration every input, large or small. So every individual that contributes with value to a project is considered as a contributor to the system. Now, some individuals, they can play technical roles. Other individuals, they can play 
more business or administrative roles, it doesn't matter. In the end, they're all roles, and behind these roles, in the end, they're all people. So we decided to keep, to preserve the peer-to-peer -peer nature of our network. Now, moving a product to the market requires manufacturing, requires distribution, so we realized that we need other resources on top of the value accounting system. We need tools to manage the supply chain, tools to manage tangible resources, tools to manage projects, to manage customers' relations. So basically, we're realizing here that in order for this organization to grow and to close the cycle of design and distribution and service, we need an infrastructure. So we need people that design and build this infrastructure. We need programmers. And they came. Sensorica is now building the infrastructure to support its own growth. And this platform that we're designing is tailored for a peer-to-peer -peer environment of production. It's tailored for a network-type organization. Now, with all these tools and processes on site, we're starting to have a more clear vision. We're starting to see a new sustainable economic model. So what do we do next? We draft these unusual business plans for all the products that are emerging from our organization. And we share them openly online and invite others to come and to participate. Sensorica is now officially an open enterprise. It is an open value network. So you are free to come and to create value. There are no barriers to value creation. You own the revenues generated by your efforts. You decide where and how to allocate your own resources, including your time. And interestingly, you can fork and remix projects which you can see, if you want, as individual businesses. This is a, an important feature of an open enterprise is that you can remix and fork it. Interesting concept. Sensorica is more than three years old, and it's now more than 50 members all over the world, including academic research labs. We design and produce sensors on an open platform that are very affordable. Our first products are, tar are targeting the um, scientific instruments market, and they're applied in biomedical research. And we're also very, working very hard on sensing and automation solution for agriculture and on portable devices to detect the quality of food, water, and soil. We strive to become a self-sustaining organization that is able to design, manufacture, distribute, and service. Now, some of you might be very skeptical because this is my experience talking to people about, about this type of uh, venture, um, this type of economy, about Sensorica. So you probably might think, well, if you evacuate hierarchy from the entire value system, this organization cannot survive. It's probably doomed. Well, our experience tells us otherwise. Because you see, control mechanisms are not evacuated. They're still there. They're just distributed now. For example, as the organization grows, we design and implement a formal reputation system so that everybody, everybody knows how well others are doing, how well they're performing their tasks. And then we put in place a formal role system so everybody, everybody knows what everybody else chooses to do. So the role system and the reputation system allows everybody to know in real time who's doing what and how well. And because these systems are formal, it allows us to scale the organization. Now, the reputation is also hard linked to the value equation, to that value accounting system that computes your, your, pie, uh, your pie share. So we can modulate revenue. Because in Sensorica, I can't fire anyone. There are no power relations, you remember? But if you diminish your reputation score, you're essentially removing yourself from the organization because your input, your activities, generate less and less revenue and your ability to influence others and to influence the course of projects is also greatly diminished. We're also working on new legal forms that preserve the peer-to-peer -peer nature uh, and uh, the 
informal nature of the network. And we're designing and implementing analysis modules that produce visuals about how value is created and how value flows within, in and out of the network in real time. And they help us to perform simulations and forecasts so every member of this organization can make informed and rational decisions about how and where to allocate resources. These analysis systems are, in fact, feedback mechanisms. The new digital technology allows us to cope with the increased complexity involved in accounting for thousands and thousands of small and large contributions and makes them pile up coherently into very complex products. So like Wikipedia, which was built one word at a time, we are designing Sensorica to operate in the long tail mode. The value accounting system captures all these contributions, large and small, and after the evaluation, it turns them into equity, calculates everybody's piece of the pie. We are designing an environment in which everyone who wants to create value is welcome to do so. And I am looking around and I see millions of young men and women wasting their brains looking for a salvation, looking for a job. And I want to tell these people, Stop looking for a job and start working now, today, because you don't need permission to create value. Our society is wasting talent on a massive scale because economic activity is walled in. Now, these barriers to value creations were created in an old world where they probably made sense, but the new digital technology changes the economic landscape and makes these barriers obsolete. They don't make sense anymore. We are designing the infrastructure for open value networks and the value accounting system as a fractal structure. Because we believe that in the near future, Sensorica will be just a tiny node in a network of networks processing contributions and economic transactions of all sorts. This thing can grow like the internet. The value accounting system, it's this missing link between the social web and the web for value production, which I like to call the Faber web. I want to end this presentation with a call to all the Fab Labs and hackerspaces and do-it-yourself communities, to all the open projects out there. You can today integrate open value networks and deliver the value you create to those who need it. Otherwise, Corporations will fill in the gap between you and the market and will monetize the value you create. Thank you.